wow I'm speechless it literally blew my mind and I don't even know where to start from I don't like wow hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel i hope you guys are keeping well practicing social distancing and just being positive in light of everything that is going on i'm confident that we will overcome and things will get better in due course i've actually been home during this lockdown in nigeria and i've been discovering so many things about myself that i didn't even know as you can see my hair is all did up actually i took out my braids and i relaxed my hair by myself for the first time i didn't have any burns so i relaxed it myself i straightened it out myself i did everything and i'm looking glamorous as you can see so today i'm excited to be reviewing this book it's called black ass by a egoni barrett it was a funny read it was ah, it was somebody described it as daringly provocative and i think i actually align myself with that so this book was initially not part of my to be read for this month right but i got it in october last year i looked at the back at the synopsis and it immediately got my attention i'm like yep i have to read this one so i got it in october i've had it since i mean it's almost like six months along with all the other books that i've had for like 10 years or whatever anyway so I got it and I hadn't read it and then um yeah on Twitter somebody then suggested it's like oh have you read black ass I'm like oh I've had it and they're like ah it's an amazing read I literally finished this book in two days like it's that unputdownable and engaging and honestly I cannot wait to discuss it's written by Igoni Barrett who is a Nigerian writer this is his first novel but he has written like a collection of different stories he lives in Lagos Nigeria and he's based there he's currently working on another um, book which hopefully we get to see in the near future the book is obviously purely fictional but let me tell you where this gets interesting it's satirical and it's fictional and all of that yes it's set in Lagos which I'm coming to yes but then do you know that as I read this book I started wondering Kai is this book fictional or, or is it not fictional like what is going on here because there are certain things that happen in this book that make you wonder wait oh, could it be that this thing actually happened in real life which zip i'm not going to say furo wariboko born and bred in lagos wakes up on the morning of his job interview to discover he has turned into a white man as he hits the city streets running, still reeling from his newfound condition, Furo is amazed to find the dead ends of his life wondrously open out before him. As a white man in Nigeria, the world is seemingly his oyster, except for one thing. Despite his radical transformation, his ass remains robustly black. Funny, fierce, inventive, and daringly provocative, this is a modern satire with a sting in the tail briefly this the plot summary as you've already heard is about this guy who wakes up he's a nigerian guy about like 33 or so but you don't really get to know his age until you're sort of well into the book who is still living with his parents and his family in their family house in lagos and then he wakes up the morning of an interview finds out that he's a white man and but he's still determined to go for the interview he doesn't even know how to break the news to his family and he's not really in the mood to do that so he ends up going for the interview of course i'm not going to say so much but the book just chronicles his life from that day that he wakes up to i think maybe 25 days or so maybe uh like a month or so so the book is set in a month all his experiences that he encounters as a white man him trying to get the job um pe people that he meets along the way that help him and stuff like that it's funny it's engaging it's a nice entertaining read because it's the most unlikely thing that would ever happen and i'm not even going to speak about why the title of the book is the title of the book because yeah you think that it's about a black man who turned white but there's a reason why the title is the way it is so if you want to know obviously you have to pick up the book and read the book is set in lagos nigeria and then there's some parts that are set in abuja but it's mostly set in lagos and i guess why i'm already biased towards this because of course as you know i was born and bred in lagos so all the descriptions in the book like i've never seen 
a book that is as detailed as this book like literally in terms of description and use of imagery which i'm coming to like there is no way that you cannot even and i guess that that's why a lot of people really fell in love with the book even people abroad in terms of like overseas i i watched an interview that the author had with the channels book club kind of thing and he was just talking about how a lot of foreigners like americans people in the uk like really fell in love with the book because they loved the apt description of lagos as a mega city and just chronicling the life of an average man who now becomes not so average because he's white you know from his community where he's living in lagos and how he navigates through the parts of lagos the reactions of people and busy Lagosians who are going left, right, and center, hustling, and all of that. So let's talk about the author's use of imagery. Wow, that's where, that is where I'm like, okay, this is amazing. This guy literally brought Lagos to life. Look, like when he was describing everything, I was seeing. Okay, I don't know whether it's because obviously I grew up in Lagos and I could relate. He did a great job. He did a great job. I can also speak from the angle of somebody who grew up in lagos and who navigated lagos the ways that he did you know using brt buses trying to use cabs from marina to lecky the palms you know to vgc to aja so i can understand so from the perspective of somebody who grew up in lagos as well i think he did a phenomenal job with the use of imagery i can understand why people will fall in love with this book just because of that it was just too real and just too great so thumbs up for that i really really loved it now to the writing style <laughs> this was the one that killed me right okay so the book is primarily written in the third person narrative the author is describing furo wariboko's you know journey or whatever this is he's incident or whatever the situation is that's happened to you. so it's third person narrative and i love the way the author just went straight into the plot there was no dilly dallying around trying to get us to know who furo wariboko was before he became a white man and i know that i was discussing this with zubi hi zubi and she was saying yeah she just felt like she wanted more in terms of knowing about Furo before he became a white man and I totally understood that because I mean there were some decisions that he made along the way which I'm not even going to say anything about he made some decisions along the way which were major major decisions that made him seem like he was a selfish person and her view was like oh I, I, I wish I got I had gotten to know him more before he turned white like oh why did he turn white or who was he before he turned white what made him make those kind of decisions and all and i totally totally understood you know where she was coming from but me i also like the fact that the book flew into i felt like because it flew right into the main plot like i picked up the book because i read the back the synopsis and i'm like oh he wakes up in the morning of an interview and he's white that's the fact in fact if i don't get that from the first couple of pages i'm going to drop the book to be honest because books that have slow reads for me are just like st slow starters they just sort of make me and then somebody will come and say oh no it was, it was eventually interesting mm -mm. let it pick up from as soon as i pick the book now halfway into the book right there's a portion that is written um in first person narrative and it's written by somebody who is a writer called igoni so i'm like okay is the writer in real life that's real life and see how i'm going to describe them now real life writer igoni and in the book <laughs> writer igoni because in the book the igoni who was narrating an account was a writer too so at some point i'm wondering okay is it that this book is fictional or non-fictional like did it happen and what happens we heard of this story before so i'm like okay obviously it's not real then i keep on reading and the the book the inside the book igoni writer is giving his account of having met furo at some particular point and it's like anyway <laughs> it was just funny because if he had if he had used another name and he and the person had had another profession it wouldn't have been so confusing but i think it was now confusing for me because i'm like okay anyway it made me want to read more i don't know whether that was a strategy in his writing or i don't know 
where that came from, but it made me want to read more. So you will find that there are some parts of the book that are written in third person narrative from the author in real life, that's Igoni the writer in real life, and then there are some parts that are written first person narrative by Igoni the writer in the book. So there's actually a character in the book called Igoni and he's also a writer and he contributes <laughs> to the writing of the book. <laughs> wow. Man, I didn't even know. Like, so people are just talented. I, I'm just tired. I'm not even going to talk about the one that blew my mind that had to do with social media that he did just so that at some point you were wondering, ah, is this book really real or whatever? So that's that. I really, really appreciate it. <laughs> I, I can't get over it honestly i can't because as i when i was discussing this book afterwards to someone i'm like honestly i don't think i've ever read a book that has messed with my mind this much so i think he did all in all i think he did a great job with his writing style um and the way he was able to put forth his ideas this man's use of english this book is not as in honestly it is it is one of the most intentional and i've read quite a number of books fiction self-help whatever but his use of english language his command of the english language to express himself metaphorically literally in whatever device he's using this was really second to none i i really really was so impressed by that from the first page of the book i could tell that this guy is somebody who knows how to write. In fact, there were some new words that I was like, eh, what is dictionary? Please bring it. Let me see what's going on. Because honestly, it was good. And I must commend him definitely on that. Let's talk about some of the themes that were in this book, which in my view made this book very daringly provocative. Now, this book is written by a Nigerian writer who is based in Nigeria. And, you know, there are a lot of things in our social life and our community living as nigerians that we have really not yet opened our eyes to as it were and the book explored things like white privilege in the sense that you know in nigeria we tend to take like when we have experts who come in for work we tend to sort of have this worshiping thing what that we do with them and this sort of inferiority complex to our fellow nigerians so a nigerian would treat his fellow nigerian worse than how he would treat a foreigner who is in nigeria you also saw things like you know people trying to cheat furo because he was white everybody just assumed oh once you're white you're rich there's dollars in your pockets a lot of people were so intrigued by the fact that he sounded so much like a Nigerian because while he turned into a white man, he still sounded very much like himself. So everybody was like, ah, a white man that has a, a purely uh, Nigerian name and sounds Nigerian. And people are like, hmm, are you sure? Like, whatever. So yeah, there was that. There was also um, the theme of transformation, transitioning and transgendered. Um, I don't even know what to call it. The whole transgendered community sort of thing because yeah there was that i'm not even going to say where it came into place because i don't want to give um spoilers but it was very interesting to see that being explored in a nigerian fiction book it was just interesting to see how these themes were explored you know even in terms of social media the use of social media and stuff like that there were some really deep significant things that were discussed in a subtle way and in a not so subtle way but for the fact that it came from a nigerian i would say that this book is definitely one of a kind and there are a lot of discussions that happen in the book there are a lot of themes there are a lot of issues that i know that the average nigerian were not ready to have those discussions yet because of our communal living our communities and this book was published in 2015 that's like five years ago so for him to be able to sit down and write this and just put everything in his head down on paper and explore these different themes irrespective of the fact that these are not popular things that are discussed in fictional books i really really commended him for that and i thought that it was a great effort all in all in terms of the ending <laughs> or the finishing of this book in fact i think one day i'm going to have to record myself my reaction to the ends of books that i i read like I did for Of Women and Frogs. Because when I was done reading this book, I was like, whoa, okay. I liked it too. I liked it. I, I honestly didn't mind. 
I know that sometimes when I read books and the end is like, you sort of wonder if there's a part two. It made you hunger for more, yes. And to be fair, like, like I said, when I discussed with Zubi, she didn't really like the end because she's like, okay, and so what happened? And so why did you just leave us hanging there? But I actually liked it. I liked it because honestly, I don't really know if I would have, well, you never know how it would have spinned if the ending had gone beyond the ending. So the ending was like a major cliffhanger. It just made you wonder, okay, you know so <laughs> so yeah it really did mess with one's mind i mean the book was just a trip honestly i think that's just <laughs> that's the best way to put it it was a trip it, this book is one of a kind i don't think i've read anything that is like this i'm sure as i read more as time goes on i'll probably see books like this but this one really really was a trip so what would i score this great book I'll definitely give it a an 8.5 over 10. It was a great read. It was entertaining. I loved the use of imagery. I loved the command of English language. So if you're looking for something entertaining, a nice satirical read, then you can pick up this book and you would definitely laugh. You would be like, <gasps> you gasp, you laugh, you be mind screwed you wonder what is going on you look left and right you have so many reactions to the book but all in all it was a lovely engaging read and i'm happy i read this book thank you guys so much for watching this review if you've read the book please let me know leave a comment and if you're going to pick it up please let me know as well don't forget to subscribe by clicking the link below and i'll see you in my next video bye